Hey, I get people all the time that email me and say, hey, Stephen, how do you do that with your 360 camera? I've tried editing. I just can't get it to work. It's time consuming. My editing software doesn't do it. And when I think it does do it, it often doesn't work. It's so frustrating. Can you help me? Yeah, I can do that. And I'm going to show you exactly how. Hey, good morning. My name is Stephen. And if you've been sent over to my channel by my friend Daniel Batal, who is a Filmora tutorial expert, then thank you for coming over. Daniel is sending me all the inquiries for 360 tutorials because I'm making lots of content in 360, but there is a lot of problems with the workflow of 360. The results take a very long time. Yes, they do. And the reason for that is because the files are much bigger. They're not 16 by nine or square one by one. These are 360 degrees. That means one camera sees everything. So after all those things about the software, the expense of the software just to do the editing of the 360, and it takes a very long time, it doesn't always work. Load it to YouTube or social media and it's not in 360. People get this far and then they quit. And they've got their 360 cameras sitting on their shelves and they do not know what to do with them next. I'm going to show you how a we can use this on a consumer level where you can edit good 360 content and get some amazing results. But there's three things I need to tell you before we move on to the actual screens where I'm going to be showing you the edit process. With 360, everything takes a long time. The processing on YouTube especially. Number two is files from different 360 cameras or brands often don't match. But there is one piece of software which will convert all these different file formats into MP4. Go and download now one piece of software which will work with all 360 files. And that's the Insta360 Studio for your home computer. I've got a Mac, so I've got the Mac version. And also the Insta360 Player. And the workflow, as I said, is going to be quite lengthy. I'm going to be sh closing down, speeding up, if you like the process, so you can see the results. And I'm only going to be making a four minute video. So let's get on with it. Let's do that right now. Now I'm assuming that you've already done as I suggested at the beginning and downloaded the Insta360 player. If you haven't, stop the video now. Go to the video description and download the player and the studio. Once you've done that, you'll see that the ordinary 360 files look like this. This is called equirectangular. The ratio is two by one. And this is not how you want your videos to look. And when we've finished with this process, your videos will look like this. Full interactive 360 degrees. For the purpose of this tutorial, I'm using the Insta360 One X file and we need to convert this and make sure it ends up as a proper 360. Let me just remind you that if you're using any 360 footage from any brand or camera, all you need is the 360 Studio, which will trim your beginning and end. So if you need to do nothing else at all to your footage, stick with this, the basic program, and you'll have no problems. Once you've trimmed your footage to the beginning and the end, the length that you wish, it's then you could use this piece of software to convert it to MP4. Simply click the yellow box, check the settings, especially the resolution, which should be a two to one ratio. Here you'll see it's 3840 by 1920 and then click OK. This then exports that file as MP4. Now here's the bit you've been waiting for using Filmora. Well, in my case, you can use whatever you like. Drag your footage into the timeline and make sure that you use the crop and zoom feature and choose the original ratio. Because don't forget, from studio, you exported it as a 3840 by 1920. And we need to preserve that because you'll see in the top corner, it's in the equi rectangular two in one ratio, 3840 by 1920. This is because Filmora is not a 360 viewer or a player. It's a video editor. So you're going to see this perspective 
of 38, 40, 19, 20. At this point, you can edit however you like, bringing down all the things you want to include in this particular case, one of my logos. I'll put that to its original format, which is a square. And the most important thing to remember is keep things small. So I need to reduce this and put it in the middle. Now, let me show you what I do. I re reduce that in size really, really small. I'll put it where I think people will be watching and the op at the opening of the video, which is probably at me and make, make sure it's small and it's dead center to the screen. If it's at the top or the bottom, it will appear distorted. Next, I'll move to maybe adding a call to action. It could be subscribe. I've got one of Daniel's features here, which he's kindly given his members. And once I've got rid of the green screen, again, it's the same principle. Make very, very small and drag it so it appears somewhere on the middle line of the screen. Of course, if they're watching uh, 180 degrees when this pops up, and it's at zero degrees, they're not going to see that at all. But you might also want to add a little bit of music. So after I've done some trimming, I want to put a bit of music here. I'll select where I want to go, adjust the volume. And now I'm going to export that. Make sure that the resolution look is still the same. That's important. 39, 40, 19, 20. If it's not, you can change it in the custom there. And then export. Now I did tell you at the beginning of this video that one of the problems is 360 is a big file and everything takes longer. To give you some idea how long it took, I've speeded this up by 20 times, but we get there in the end. Most people will test out the 360, as they hope it is, in a 360 player of some sort and it will play but that's what they're meant to do the thing is youtube is not a 360 player the files need to be encoded so that youtube recognizes it's supposed to be a 360 equirectangular the problem is editing in any software it strips out the metadata as you can see in the example just now but this example shows exactly the same edited file with the metadata injected back in and this is the secret so here's the final part of this mystery how do you get this injection of the data back in well as you can see on screen all you need to do is to search for the free Spatial Media Metadata Injector. I'll put a link in the video description. Ironically, this is probably the easiest part of the whole process, because once you open the Spatial Media Metadata Injector and you choose your file, it's so simple. Immediately, it tells you the attributes of the file, like the video is a spherical 360, and all you do is click Inject Media. Now, this is the point. Again, it takes a long time for a long video and takes a short time for a short video. But once it's done, it's done and it saves it to your desktop. So now all you have to do is actually to upload the files to YouTube and they will, fingers crossed, 99% sure at all times, they will be in 360 format. Now, this is my first tutorial. I don't know how well I've done. I don't even know if you want any more tutorials because these really aren't my things. I'm a metal detectorist. I'm a coin ringer. I make rings from coins that I dig up. If you'd like more of this sort of stuff, then please tell me. Make sure you subscribe. Make sure you click that bell icon. But more importantly than that, have a look at my Etsy store, link in the video description, and see the sort of things I make, just in case you're interested in buying any. I'll check in with you soon. Meanwhile, keep safe.